With the world economy in a fragile state, top corporations must adapt to survive. The bosses of some of Canada's biggest companies are about to take extreme action. To stay ahead of the game, they're going undercover in their own organizations. This week, a pizza and pasta joint fights to get back on top of the food chain. The restaurant industry is very competitive, and Eastside Mario's is starting to look tired. Eastside Mario's is one of Canada's first family-style Italian restaurants. But they're not aging gracefully. Times have changed, and we need to move with the times. For CEO John Rothschild, going undercover is one of the biggest challenges he's faced in his career. I come from a business background. I don't cook. I'm no restaurateur. To win back customers, he's about to go from giving orders to taking them. My name's Adam. Can I take a drink order? He has no idea what he's doing. I made a mistake. You gotta pick up a pace. You gotta feed these people. During his week as a restaurant rookie. Don't drop that. He'll face the heat of the kitchen. Corner hot, hot around. Whoa. The wings? The burnt. Burnt. Way out of my comfort zone. Let's go. I'm getting soaked here. Head offices, heads are up their asses. Oh, we're definitely gonna lose guests. Then, when he returns to his role as the company's Mr. Big. I'm John Rothschild, and I'm CEO of Eastside Marriott. Oh, my God. These hardworking employees will get the biggest tip of their life. Wow, uh, this is a lot to take in. <laughs> because this is Undercover Boss Canada. Eastside Mario's has been piling the nation's place with Italian-style food for 25 years. They employ about 4,000 staff and have over 90 restaurants across the country. And one man has been at the helm of the half-billion-dollar company. Eastside Mario's is designed to be an American-Italian eatery. It captures the fun and craziness of the east side of New York and the food from Italy. Family, fun, and value is the essence uh, of our brand, and consistency and quality are very important to us. I want to make sure that Eastside Marrows is the best it can be. I don't come from a restaurant background. I'm an accountant uh, by training. I worked for many years in the investment uh, business. It's more of a numbers and paper uh, type of a game. This business, it's very different. It's all about customers relating to people. But uh, ultimately, everything translates into uh, dollars and cents. While John and the restaurant have shared success over the years, balancing finance and family is an ongoing challenge for him. You have to be dedicated to your family, dedicated to your business, and in some times, make sacrifices. It was very difficult. I spent a considerable amount of time uh, away from my family. I wasn't around to perhaps give the full male influence to my son. Cheers. I know now being with my family uh, is important. So whenever we can keep the family together, that's great. How's that, Adam? Looks good, Dad. Hey. Not bad for your first time. <laughs> But the stakes are high if the restaurant wants to maintain its place as a popular family eatery. You have to be on your game. The timing now is critical to go undercover. We're starting to be, look tired, and Eastside Mario's needs to reinvigorate to reinvent the brand. John's called his executive team together for an urgent meeting. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. John. What I have to talk to you about uh, this morning is very important. Times have changed, so I've decided to step away from my role as CEO. In fact, I'm going to go undercover and work in disguise to learn from the front lines what's going on at Eastside Mario's. I need to find out what is missing and what we can add to make our concepts, once again, the leaders in our industry. It's going to be a make or break type of week. 
John's very recognizable in the community, uh, so the disguise has to be very, very good. While undercover, I'm going to be Adam Johnson, an accountant taking part uh, in a documentary about whether older people can work in a younger person's business and keep up. Hello, you guys. Go ahead. <laughs> what are you, what are you wearing? <laughs> the last time I saw my dad with a full head of hair was in my own baby photos. I didn't know who the strange man was. He looks actually like a tourist. John's not a very casual kind of a guy. I have no doubts that he'll be great, but I've never ever seen him make more than maybe scrambled eggs. For the rest of the week, he'll be traveling across the country away from the comforts of home. I tell my son all the time, when you're listening, you're learning. And John's about to get an education. Coming up, it's out of the frying pan and into the fire. I gotta be honest? Yeah. I gotta be a little more faster. And later, oh, a startling discovery. We're definitely gonna lose guests, for sure. Yesterday, John Rothschild was the big cheese at Eastside Mario's. He's spending the rest of the week in disguise to find out what's cooking on the front lines. I'm going to Eastside Mario's Scarborough. Be working in the kitchen. It's an area where I have zero skill set. Food is foremost. I want to see firsthand the quality uh, that is coming out of the kitchen and what we can do better. It's day one, and John will be working with kitchen manager Luke, who churns out around 350 meals a day. This is your uniform, sir. You get changed up. Uh, but can you do it quickly? See you out here in like two minutes, OK? That's all you got, two minutes. So okay. you need to jump on my tail and then scroll, all right? Let's do it. It's the lunch hour, and many customers don't have time to spare. So Luke has to maintain food quality while meeting a demanding turnover. OK, so this is the station we're working on today, saute. We have a seafood linguine. OK, so pan's nice and hot. So you start with four shrimp, two scallops. I mean, Eastside Marius is all yeah. about fast turnover and getting the people in and out, right? You want to add your muscles to it. It'll get four muscles. All this needs at this point is just some sauce, right? It's good to go, too, right? So if you want to do me a favor, yes. pass that up for me. OK. <laughs> you don't okay. work to the kitchen, right? I don't know. No. <laughs> all right, all right. The sauté. That's one skill set that's beyond me. Yeah, I can't okay, throw it so the way you can. It's called sautéing, which means the art of jumping, right? So you want to pass it up and just catch it. Give it a try. Come on. Honestly, I thought he might be in a little over his head. I'm not going to lie. Come on. OK. Yeah. Loosen your hands. I got you. Ready? Just toss it up. That's it. OK? Voila. You got your first jump on. All right, all right. We're doing all right. Let's get that out. Let's see what you got there. Perfect. And then you just drop the rest in the middle. Excellent. So you know what you're going to do right now? A okay. seafood linguine while I put this over here. Because I showed you how, and I expect you to know how now. Let's see you do it, my man. OK. OK. Not getting it. So you want to go boom, yeah. get that heat up, OK? And we're going to start off with what ingredients? Uh, four shrimp, two uh, scallops. Look excited, man. You look so sad. Scared. No, focused. <laughs> scared, yeah. Focused. All right. Focused. We'll see. All right, well, then, let's go. We got it. Little long. All right, and a fed alfredo. So on a fed alfredo, we just get the sauce in the pan. So, right, and, sauce is... and I'm going to toss it right there, the white sauce in the corner right there. Right there. Look straight ahead. Yeah. OK. <laughs> To me, the menu looks complicated as heck. But it's designed for a fast and efficient service, right? This job is busier than I had ever imagined, and it doesn't seem to be letting up. It's getting a little busy, it's all right, yeah? I can't keep up, and our customers are waiting for their meals. They're going to walk out. Two small Amtraks, one no bacon, one to take out. I got a side bolo and a scallop carbonara with a pesto linguine alfredo, right? OK, I'm way out of my uh, comfort zone. I feel as if I'm an anchor uh, to this guy. 
when we get backed up and the customers start to suffer, uh, we have to find the source of why. You want to just do me a favor? Just keep an eye on me. Off to the side right. just a little bit, right? He had uh, six grills going at one time, and he had to catch up and uh, push me aside. The new guy's slowing me down. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> I'm backed up on stuff that I shouldn't be backed up on, so I'm trying to catch up now. Okay, uh, it was so, quite a lunch, man. It was nearly as busy as it could have been, but um, that wasn't a busy lunch. No, no, not at all. Dinner is like 10 times what you saw at lunch. I'm a little concerned about his ability to uh, complete the dinner rush. Coming up, can John step up to the plate? Don't drop that. And this plate and that plate. So we need to make an adjustment and get this ball rolling over. It's a little rough. And later, harsh words about the company he runs. I think head offices, heads are up their asses. Incognito boss John Rothschild has been helping kitchen manager Luke with the lunch crowd. All right, with that, let's go. We got to feed these people. They're taking away the food. Uh -oh. Now with the dinner rush comes double the customers. When you're coming in, you got to organize yourself. So now we're going to drop two pounds of wings and we have a new chicken parmesan, right? OK. So you got four drumettes, four wings. Right. So whenever you get something done, you want to do a setup right after, right? So you fold it in half. Make a nice little triangle out of it. Fold again. And you do that like that. Send me back to triangle school. It's a little, it's a little rough. It's a little rough. Idea. With wings, it would have burnt. Burnt. <laughs> So here we go. Chicken parm, two ounces of sauce. So right, you get about an ounce of cheese. Yeah. Gotta brown it up. Sauce. Brown it up. That's it. That's it, my man. There you go. Two pounds wings. So it'll go do it. Okay. There you go. Try and toss it up. <laughs> You're bouncing, bro. I'm a bounce. Oh, that's hey, it. That's what it I is. Did it. I think I did it. <laughs> that's perfect. Let's spade them up. And get them out. You want one for what? A kid's what? A kid's what? A kid's what? Lots of kids' meals going out, huh? Uh, yeah. Kids eat free. A lot of people come here and argue over the kids eat free, and they're trying to get away with it as much as they can, paying as little as possible. Yeah, we do have people that take advantage of the kids eat free. Um, put some pressure on the kitchen. That's another plate we have to make, right? Look. Yeah. Don't drop that. Kids Eat Free is a promotion that we've been running for a long time. The idea and behind that was to bring families uh, into the restaurants. More kids' meals. Yeah. But More it's slowing down the cooking of other paid-for dinners. I think uh, we need to find out uh, whether it's something that we should replace. Buddies are down. We need to drop a chicken parm. Drop yeah. me a chicken parm. Kids parm. Chicken parm. Another chicken parm. Chicken parm coming up. I made a hundred kids' meals. I made a thousand uh, chicken parms. Let me guess, chicken parm. Parm in. Chicken parm is Up on a plate, sauce. That Just enough. It. Salamander. I'm the parm man. <laughs> Honestly, I gotta be honest. Yeah. I gotta be a little more passive. Gotta pick up a piece. Cannelloni, is it in, working? Butter no squash, where is it at? Which one is the one? The side there? Not yet? OK, sell that when you're ready, OK? You come with that scallop card. All right, ordering a piccata. I think Luke is an amazing young man. This was his calling. Capoletti's up, chicken parm penny nap. And he knows how to move. That guy is like a ballerina okay. when he gets going. Yeah, the Capoletti's up. We just went for the parm. Adam, so we got to move a little quickly, all right? Yeah, yeah, you got it? It's right here, right here. It's tough uh, working the line. They're going, they're going, they're going. And that food is coming out, is coming out. Good job, gentlemen. I'm very. Uh, impressed. When's your shift over? Uh, when I've done this, tomorrow's my day off. I get to go hang out with my son. How old's he? Uh, 17 months. 17 months? Yeah. A baby. You What's know, his he, name? His name's Akil. Akil? Yeah, Akil. Yeah, yeah. You know what right. I mean? Like, so, how often do you get to see him? Uh, days off, whenever they come, right? Is that it? <laughs> That's it, man. That's it. Uh, You're not living with him? No, no, unfortunately oh, not. No, bad. unfortunately not. No, so I gotta to make do, right? I hear you. Tough to establish a career. Yeah, I can certainly identify with Luke.
missed uh, a lot of uh, my sons growing up. I wish I could uh, uh, reach out to him and give him the, the magic answer to the balance between uh, raising a son and establishing his career. Work does take away from, uh, you know, the time you could be spending with family and things like that. But hopefully the hard work gets noticed by who needs to notice it, and uh, it takes you to that next level. That's the dream, you know what I mean? That's the dream. <laughs> I used to go every other day until I had to make some adjustments to my schedule and stuff like Where's that. Where's the car? Because I live in Pickering. Yeah. And we live in Ajax. Right. All right, so that's it for this. We're done now. Thank you so much for your help right. today. Hey, All right. Luke, you are a master right, at what you're doing. Thank you, Adam. It's I great. This is a great day. All Love right, man. Thanks. Bye now. I'm tired. I know the bed will be great tonight getting to sleep. Coming up, it's a struggle to dish it out. Having a trainee that's not at my pace, it can be very frustrating at times. And later, the boss has to take orders. Hello there, my name's Adam. He has no idea what he's doing. <laughs> Eastside Mario's exec, John Rothschild, is working on the QT. And he's been eating up a lot of time. So we gotta move a little quickly, all right? Yeah, yeah. I gotta be honest with you. Yeah. I gotta be a little more fast. Gotta pick up the pace. Now he's in Red Deer, Alberta. I'm going to be working in the pizza salad area. Pizza defines Eastside Mario's, and today I'd like to see just what are the pros and cons. Hello there. Are you Jen? Yes, I am. All right, Jen. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. John's joining Chef Jen. We're gonna work together today, yeah? Yeah. Who dishes up 3,500 meals a week. All right. So this is the pizza salad station? He's on another lunch trench and will be helping prep pizza and salads. Okay, what do we got here? And all this time you actually make a couple salads that just came up. Three Caesars. And now you've got another bill with three Caesars and a garden. A fourth Caesar that just came up. Add a little bit more salad mix. John's feeling overwhelmed. He's only made two salads and orders are backing up. Salad, salad, Caesar, 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 garden. Eight, geez. Yes, but because we have so many garden bills, he's going to take over doing salads just because we kind of catch up a little bit. They're having to keep an eye on the appetizers because they're running low. So I'll just have you do stuffed mushrooms, and you just pretty much pipe a small kind of dollop onto each one. You like working here? I do. I love it here. The first opportunity I ever got was in a kitchen. Uh-huh. So as soon as I got into it, I, I realized it was something I was really good at. So why drop what you're good at? <laughs> For sure. Jen is terrific. Uh, she's very personable. I hope when I go home, my wife doesn't expect me to be a cook. <laughs> <laughs> she found what she wants to do and what she loves doing in her own way. She is a success. It's like squeezing a tube of toothpaste. <laughs> but as cooperative as a tube of toothpaste, too. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. The restaurant's filling up, and they're needed back on the front line. So we have two pizzas. Oh, they're already preformed. That's um, one of the, the negatives. We've gone to a very generic, though. So, this new dough that we have, we have lost quite a few regulars, and that's just because it has gone too generic. I think our newer pizzas taste like something you could go buy at a grocery store. And what's the point of going out and eating food if it can taste like something you can buy at a grocery store? It stupefies me that this kind of stuff uh, happens. If the customers don't like the taste or texture of our dough, we've got an issue, and I've got to do something about that. Maybe I should take a closer look at the whole menu head office has tried to streamline more towards fast food. So I think the head office's heads are up their asses. And if they're going to keep it very generic, we're definitely going to lose guests for sure. I'm still Anybody. working on the sauce. You've got yours already done and assembled. Yeah, it's one of those things where you're going to want to start picking up your pace as you go. Adam is really slow. You actually are going to want to use quite a bit more than that. Oh, yes? 
it can be very frustrating at times. So I'll just have you move out of the way for a second. I had to ask Adam to step aside because I don't want bill times to run longer for training purposes. It's just a matter of making sure that the guests are getting a full East Side Mariel's experience. Jen is fantastic. She is going through the pizza dough, the sauce, the pepperonis. Like a dealer in Las Vegas would be dealing cards. Uh, uh, there's an art, there's a respect uh, for what she's doing. So now we've kind of got like a breathing moment. So I'll just have you start with stocking these under here. And notice your tattoo on your arm. What's it say? Um, I know who I am and who I may be if I choose. Very profound. Yeah. You choose where you end up in life. You're Get in charge to where of you yourself, need to. huh? Yeah, exactly. And it's just, it's a nice reminder. I definitely go through periods where I'm really upset about my past. I dropped out of high school. I, I haven't accomplished what I wanted to in life. To me, it looks like you are. I'm very <laughs> impressed with what you're doing. What are some of your goals then? I still live with my dad. Um, I'm about five grand into saving for a house. You sound like you might have gone like down a, an unusual path. Yeah. And maybe coming here. This okay. this was that my savior. My Tired parents split off when I was 12 years old, uh, and it really took a toll on me personally. I had harbored so much resentment towards them. When I transitioned to grade 10, I dropped out. I met wrong people. They introduced me to cocaine and crack. <laughs> At that point, I ran away from home with my boyfriend. I couldn't live without him. He was the only love in my eyes that I had. We lived in a tent in, um, in a park. And we stayed together for eight months. In a tent? Yes. In a park? Yes. Um, oh, my god. The turning point for me was I ended up getting really messed up one night on crack. And we had come back to our tent. Um, the police had found it, and they burnt everything that we had. And so I had to pretty much swallow my pride and come back to my dad. It's a blessing that Jen found her way back. It's obvious how she has grown from that experience and has become an amazing young woman. Uh, with a very positive attitude and therefore uh, a very positive uh, future. I want to thank you uh, for all the help you've given me today. Thank you. Well, it's been a pleasure. I'm glad I got thank to meet you. Thank you very much. That was a tough day. And I've really got to address the issue of the pizza dough when I get back to the office. Soup's on, but John's not. If you were slow and did the dawdling, you are so screwed. Right now, I'm just trying to survive. And later, his staff are about to find out what's really on the menu. <laughs> wow, uh, this is a lot to take in. <laughs> Eastside Mario's boss, John Rothschild, has a hidden agenda. He's telling everyone he's having a midlife crisis and looking to make a career change. But he's really checking out if his restaurants are in order. It's mid-afternoon, and he's just arrived in Regina, Saskatchewan, in time to work the night shift. I'm going to be trying my hand at serving tables. Uh, this one is going to be very difficult. I'm here to see what our customer service is like. Hello, are you Kelsey? No, Kelsey, Kelsey? is great. Okay. Adam, are you Kelsey? Yes, I am. Hey, I'm Adam. Nice Adam? to meet you. Nice yeah. to meet you. You're going to work right. together tonight? Yes, and I'm going to be showing you how to do everything. All right. Fine. Kelsey's right anxious to see if he has any table manners. We so. are running around a lot more than at most restaurants because we have a lot more steps that we have to make, like the unlimited bread, the unlimited soups, and the unlimited salads. Butter. A lot of steps just involved to get yeah, the, the exactly. bread and butter going. So just put one at each end of the table. The restaurant's all-you-can-eat home loaf, soup, and salad is one of their biggest customer grabs, but it puts a lot of pressure on the servers. There's so many steps that they seem to have to remember. I'm flabbergasted. It's coordinated chaos. Right now, I'm just trying to survive. At this point, he has no idea of what he's doing, really. It should be interesting. You have to be so fast when it comes to the food to be a good server. If you are slow and diddle dawdling, you are so screwed. Hello there. You asked for the soup? Enjoy. I'm working with uh, Kelsey, and she's delightful. I love that smile. Yeah. You're moving. Yeah, you don't really get to stand still here, so. The number one thing that we want to do is make sure that everybody gets good service, they get what they wanted. 
all in good time and that they enjoy their experience. How, okay. how do you know? Most people By are not tip? shy yeah, about tell, complaining. Tell you? Yeah, okay. Exactly. And sometimes the tip does reflect the service, and sometimes people are just cheap, right? Like, and, <laughs> and don't tip. When do you get a drink? Uh, you can take one if you want. Uh, you lose a lot of water running yeah. around, I guess. That's actually kind of the downfall to the red and green shirts. How's you, that? You can tell when people are sweating profusely because you get uh -huh. big pancakes on your arms and yeah. stuff. So I think it's the air conditioning. In a restaurant, there's always stuff that's breaking down. Like, oh, yeah? you've probably heard the squeaking ductwork. Okay. Kind of sounds like a dying bird. Sometimes really hard to work in an environment that isn't what it could be. Kind of annoying if you're in that section in that table. I would be pretty excited if we could get renovations in here and just update this place a little bit. This business is a, is a business of thousands and thousands of small details. So a squeaky air conditioner or a cotton shirt, what gets quite hot in every detail is important. None is too small. Uh, What's next, boss? So okay. six got sat. So I'm going to get you to do all the main stuff. I was pretty petrified about going out and taking care of uh, customers by myself. Hello there. My name's Adam. Adam, he's pretty quiet. You have to be assertive with tables so that they know you're the boss, you're running things. You got to tell me what you want, otherwise you're not getting it. Have we all decided? Being able to listen to your table and know exactly what they're trying to tell you is very important. Yeah, I guess we'll get nachos then. Uh, no salsa on it. I don't know how to work. You have to make sure that they know what they're getting and that you're making it all correctly. All right, nachos. Excuse me. The salsa came on it. Yeah, so she's not going to dig the salsa on it. So why don't we eat that? Kelsey, you made a mistake. He doesn't want salts on it. Okay, I'll get them to remake. Okay. Adam definitely wouldn't be able to handle a full section. I don't know if he would make enough money to serve up. <laughs> You are running around. <laughs> yeah, you get used to it for sure. It's a tough job. It is. I can appreciate it, but I can see you really are a people person. I like being active. I like doing something and having something to do and having people to talk to. And are you always, always up? Oh, yeah. When it, what gets you down? Are you ever down? Um, I try and keep my life as stress-free as possible because um, when I was 11, one day randomly I got a headache and it never went away. So every day I wake up, I have a headache, I go to bed, have a headache. And it just came out of nowhere. Yeah, they still to this day don't know why I get them, what caused them, no idea. They just eventually diagnosed me with daily chronic headaches. As we sit here right now, you have a headache. I do, yeah. All the time. <laughs> So, How do you stay so cheery and um, so focused? Took, it took a long time to be able to deal with it. I just recently went to a chronic pain center in Saskatoon where they taught you how to manage chronic pain, like relaxation. So uh -huh. it's just made it so much easier to deal with for me, for sure. I have a chronic uh, disease, also oh, really? diabetes. Oh, no. And not unlike yourself, uh, you cope. <laughs> yeah, you just... exactly. I kind of realized that one day that I wasn't going to let it run my life anymore. I was going to run my life and... I feel very sorry for her. Kelsey, she's a young girl. She shouldn't have this mysterious uh, affliction that just doesn't seem to go away. But uh, she has a very positive attitude. Well, thank you. I yeah, really appreciated absolutely. working with you tonight. You too, uh, thank fun. you. You were so <laughs> kind to me. I'm tired. Yeah. Kelsey is a special employee because she gets it. She understands how to please our customers. So I've learned an awful lot today, like renovating our restaurants and having them look new. That's very important. Our restaurants are looking dated. Our customers deserve better. May not have been the best or the fastest on table 41, but you know what? They left a tip. Hey there, Susan. It's me calling. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I am exhausted. I'm tired, but it doesn't matter. So far, I've discovered an awful lot uh, about these side Marios. And we really do have some amazing, amazing young men and women. I think it's uh, amazing the speed they move at. Uh, oh, but, uh, you're not a spring chicken. These 
guys are all less than half your age properly. Uh, and, and then some. They're all 20-something. We've got one more Eastside Mario's to visit, but I'll look forward to, uh, to getting home again. I miss you. I think about you all the time. Love you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Coming up. I'm getting soaked here. And those dishes keep coming and coming. John's assigned to clean up duty and makes a surprising discovery. Serious? Well, I'm thunderstruck. Undercover boss John Rothschild has been traveling across Canada to get a taste of what's going on in his restaurants. I think our newer pizzas taste like something you could go buy at a grocery store. You've probably heard the squeaking ductwork. Okay. Kind of sounds like a dying bird. It's his last day in disguise, and he'll be getting his hands dirty. The dish pit is a very fundamental area in the restaurant. The all-you-can-eat initiative results in uh, about 15 dishes per guest that need to be washed every time. He'll be joining Ryan, who has no idea his hired hand is actually his boss. Hello there, are you Ryan? Yeah. Hey Ryan, I'm Adam, nice to meet Hi. you. Nice to meet you. How are you doing? I'm gonna be working with you today. To... Come back here. Looks like I'll... you got a pile to do, huh? Yeah. Ryan washes about 650 dishes per shift, which racks up to over 4,500 a week. A lot of water flying around here, huh? Yeah. And by the end of the day, I'm so... Yeah, I can imagine. These things come out hot. You don't burn your hands in the hot water? Yeah, they get scalded pretty bad. Can't work in gloves? I could, but then I can't feel, like, if the dishes are clean or not. You want I me to do some, uh, Ryan? Sure. Mind if I ask you a personal question? Go ahead, yeah. Seems you may have an issue uh, with seeing some of the stuff. Yeah, I'm legally blind. Serious? Yeah, I had sights until I was about 11, but then my vision started like slowly deteriorating and went to go see an eye doctor and he said he has a tumor growing on his optic nerve. Had two major um, surgeries. Every day, my sight slowly deteriorated. Can't see the dish. Like if it's baked on cheese or something, I can see a shadow sometimes. Right. But the you know, lighting in here kind of destroys my vision. Oh. It makes it all blurry. I see better when it's real faint light, like in the evening when the sun's going down. So it's too bright for you. Yeah. When Ryan told me that he was legally blind, I was thunderstruck. Ryan moves very efficiently through the dish pit. He just seems to know by feel where everything is, and uh, he's quite an amazing fellow to, to work for. I have my dish pit set up the way I use it. I always know where I am when I'm in the dish pit, but my hands get burnt, scalded. I got, you know, calluses on my hands. Here we got cutlery. You gotta sort it, forks with forks, sharp knives with sharp knives. You know, cutlery, I'm going in there with my hands, and all of a sudden, I find a huge chef's knife. Um, that's very dangerous. The dishes are starting to come in now, huh? Yeah. I'm going to want to try and go a little faster. All right, I'll pick it up. And those dishes keep coming and coming and coming. You think you get uh, ahead of it, and then there's all of a sudden more dishes are coming. I'm getting soaked here. It's stinky, and the plates are laden with stuff. You want to wash pants? It's much harder uh, working in the dish pit than I had thought. I now know what uh, dish pan hands is all about. A lot of the servers go, you know, we should go out, come out for a beer at the end of my shift. And it's like, no, I just want to go home and shower. <laughs> <laughs> Do you recognize the voice of the various servers and stuff? Is that how you identify them? I know them quite good. One of the servers, actually, I'm teaching to water ski with me. You water ski? Yeah, I'm the only blind water skier in all of Canada that competes. That's amazing. Last year, I competed in Disabled World Championships, and I got uh, three bronze medals. And I'm training this year, and I'm going to Milan, Italy. Being able to compete for Canada is a great feeling. And, uh, I'm actually going to go water ski later this afternoon. No kidding. And you want to come with and watch? See what I'd love to watch it.
What I love about water skiing is it's feeling the, the wind, the spray of the water. And I don't feel like I'm disabled at all when I'm skiing. He goes off the jump and like a champ, he lands. It was uh, amazing. <laughs> I've never seen anything quite like it in my life. My ultimate dream goal is to become world champion. Today was a big training day. You were so brave out there. I wouldn't be brave enough to do well, that. I'm glad you enjoyed yourself and I enjoyed the company and the dish pit, and there was a lot of help. There was a lot of dishes there. <laughs> Can I give you a hug? Sure. All right, man. Good luck when you go to the world competition. Thanks Take a lot. Take care. Thanks. See you later. It's an exhilarating day. Uh, this is more than a business day. The day in the dish pit was actually kind of insignificant from uh, the meeting uh, of this young man. This adventure, it was exhausting. I learned a ton. And there's a myriad of things that have to be addressed. And if these changes are not made, I don't like what the future would hold for our company. But I've met so many wonderful people that work for us. The young people are there. They get it. It's up to us to give the opportunity to reinvigorate, to reinvent the brand. They're the future at Eastside Marios. Bada boom, bada bing, baby. Coming up, Jen, Kelsey, Luke, and Ryan are summoned to HQ. And they'll be served something they never expected. <laughs> Eastside Mario's boss, John Rothschild, has ditched his fancy restaurant whites for regular duds. Now, his executives are keen to find out what he's learned while on kitchen duty. Hello, everybody. Hello, John. John. And I must tell you that it has been the toughest week of my business career. Firstly, we have an amazing group of young people uh, that are working for us. There were, though, uh, some things that I really think we must address. The Kids Eat Free uh, meal was generating a lot of activity uh, in the kitchen. And I think uh, we need to find out uh, whether it's something that we should replace. Our uniforms, the staff are sweating through the material and it becomes unsightly. Their comfort is important. When they're comfortable, our guests will get better service. The last point, I think it's time for us to bring a new and reinvigorated uh, style to our uh, restaurants. And I really think this could turn up Eastside Mario's from good to great. Let's get going. Jen, Kelsey, Luke, and Ryan have been called to company headquarters. They think they'll be reviewing their trainee, Adam, but they're the ones who'll be getting a five-star rating. Hi there. Thanks for coming today. Hi. <laughs> I understand you worked with a trainee last week, a guy named Adam Johnson. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Does my voice sound familiar to you? Yes. I am Adam Johnson, but in reality, I'm John Rothschild, and I'm the CEO of the company. Oh, wow. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh. Oh, wow. OK. <laughs> oh, do I still have a job? Kelsey, I went undercover to try and understand a little bit more about what goes on at our restaurants. Okay. And uh, the job that you perform at our restaurants right. is amazing. <laughs> uh, it's hard to keep up to you. Yeah. You talked about a couple of things at Eastside Mario's that were bugging you and the squeak or whatever it is <laughs> that's coming from my the dying the roof. Bird. Yeah. <laughs> We'll jump on that. And the issue uh, with our uniforms, we're going to do something about it awesome. uh, immediately. Also, you told me you'd like to see it a little bit more modern. We are working on the improved look in, uh, for Eastside Mario's. <laughs> that's so awesome. Oh, that's so exciting. <laughs> so there you go. Thank you. you. One of the things uh, additionally that uh, really I found quite 
distressing for me is that you suffer uh, from chronic headaches. We've done some research and there is a relaxation clinic in the Baja area of Mexico. What I'd like to do is send you to that clinic <laughs> for three years in a row oh my gosh. for you to go That'd and get insane. some peace of mind. It's important for uh, Eastside Mario's to have you in tip-top shape. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you so much. All right. That's amazing. And thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I never imagined I could get something so amazing for working at Eastside Mario's to go to Mexico three years in a row to help my headaches. It's just crazy. I don't even know what to do right now. <laughs> Ryan, when I left the dish pit area, I was soaking wet. Uh, <laughs> for me, Ryan, what uh, surprised me was that you're legally blind. And one of the things that seemed to be an issue uh, for you was the lighting. And I'm wondering if there's something we could do. Yeah, even just a dimmer switch. <laughs> well, if it's as simple as that, I would like to make it more comfortable for you to do your job. Thank you. Ryan, I've never seen anything quite as fabulous as watching you water ski. So what we'd like to do is put together $15,000 to get you to the world-class uh, championship in Milan. And I was so personally moved by the whole experience that I'm going to write a personal check for $5,000. So Antonio, $20,000 to help you accomplish your dream. That would be great. Uh, I don't know what to say. Yes. This is a huge starting point. It's, it's a great feeling. I'm just so happy. It's gonna help me out so much. Jen, you were so instructive and so helpful. Although I think I slowed you down. I don't think <laughs> I, I couldn't keep up to you. You were dealing out those pepperonis with such speed. As you know, improving all the time is something that we want to do in the uh, new pizza dough. I know you're not that happy with it. <laughs> I'm wondering, would you help give some of your input definitely. to our culinary folks here at head office? Most definitely. Yeah. Jen, you told me you got into some difficult situations. Uh, you're very brave, Jen, and I'm a father, and I couldn't imagine uh, what it would be like uh, to have my daughter go through uh, what you went through. I know getting a house in Red Deer is very important to you, that you have managed to save $5,000 towards that house. We'd like to offer you $15,000. Would that help? Yeah. That would do it? Yeah, oh yeah. Well, you deserve it. Thank you. Appreciate it. I don't know, it's just overwhelming. Things like that don't happen to little people like me. I'm just so happy and just in disbelief. <laughs> Luke, you are one of the busiest guys uh, <laughs> I, I, I've ever come across. <laughs> you told me uh, some of the issues uh, that you face as a dad. Yes. Uh, I was away from my son quite a bit when I was establishing uh, my career. I think we can do something to give you a little bit more time and opportunity to spend with your son. We'd like to get you a brand new car. Oh, no. Oh, oh yes. Yes. Oh, no. Wow, uh, this is a lot to take in. <laughs> you work so hard. Yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Uh, okay. All right. <laughs> yeah, I got a car. <laughs> Wow. It's very nice to know that what I'm doing at, at Eastside Marriage is appreciated. I just hope that I can, you know, continue my career here and just keep building and growing and learning. This is really a people business, and it is true uh, that you're only as good as the people that you have working with you. I clearly met some wonderful people, and they want to make sure that Eastside Marriage is even better tomorrow than it is today.